Hi everybody and welcome back to part two on how to make the iron war axe from Skyrim right here on the Old Ted channel. As you can see, all nice pitting right there. Back up a little bit for you guys. There, both sides. Got a nice, nice hammer finish to it. Now I got that done. My next step is the handle. Once again, it's got a leather handle on here, and it's got a little imperfections and stuff in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this uh, bottom half in this really thin craft foam. You kind of see it's a little on the long side, so I'm going to try to line these guys up and cut them just like that. There we go. And granted, I have a little bit of a seam right here, which definitely I'll go back in with my uh, quick seal. Let's go ahead and just finish this up. Turn around. And, but what I'm going to do next is on this leather on the handle. Got some little bit of lines in there. This is all perfectly smooth, so I want to just go ahead and take my um, my Dremel with the stone bit. I'm just going to do some couple like little imperfections in it. Just kind of like make it look like it's a little bit of leather on it. So we're going to make some grooves into it. Okay. Got that all up. Now let me take my quick seal. And kind of patch the seam right here. Got my little metal spatula. Now, if you guys don't have a spatula, you can definitely use like a popsicle stick or whatnot. Quick seal, like so. And fill in these big holes. Now, like I was once again, when I do quick seal, I take a little cup of water, I wet my finger, and it really smooths it out. If you guys, this is the first time watching my video and working with quick seal, I have a great video on how to make good seams right here. And I go into detail about the, um, the quick seal. Because I like this stuff because it just dries really fast and it fills the nooks and crannies. As a matter of fact, up here on this axe, a little bit of a hole back here I want to fill in as well too. So this is great for all those nooks and crannies and little holes you just want to fill in. I always like to call it, it's, like the, it's the spot putty for foam. <laughs> all right, looking good. Now it's uh, well, my quick seal is dry. I was kind of giving this guy a look over, and I realized something again. On the edge of the blade, like I did in the design here, it has some scratch lines on it. And originally I did it with a wire brush, and the more I'm looking at it, it doesn't really stand out that much, and I think it's going to get lost in the paint. So I went ahead, I'm going to take my, uh, my wood burner, and I'm just going to do some really thin lines, just some really little thin, fast lines in this guy on the edge of the blade to kind of give it that uh, worn look a little bit because I think that definitely that's, it needs a little something. My next step is some Mod Podge and the chip brush. Now granted, I went through with the heat gun and the torch and sealed everything up, but I always like to use the Mod Podge to put a little skin on it. Therefore, because this time when I do this, I'm going to top it off with a black plastic dip. Black plastic dip will probably skin up on this, but I always find that you could do less coats of uh, plastic dip if you put a little thin coat of Mod Podge. And also too, I just think it just makes it a little bit more durable. So. Okay, there it is. It's all sealed with Mod Podge. Now, in order for me to spray this with the plastic dip, uh, I got a piece of baling wire and I kind of sharpened a little bit of a point on it. And you can see right here, there's a hook. And since this is foam, I just stick this in the middle, down the bottom here. It, push it in there. There it goes. And I go pretty deep. Now the trick is with this is that it's strong enough that it'll hold it, but uh, I mean, you definitely can pull it right back out, but this is, allows me to hang it so I can spray plastic dip. So I got my wire rig on this. Let's go ahead and plastic dip this and come on back. Okay, there it is. Now I got it coated. It's dry. I'm ready to be painted. Now, of course, 
I don't have a color printer, so I went ahead and grabbed my, uh, my trusty uh, iPad. You can see kind of the brownish on there. So I'm going to get in, do a little bit of brown wash, but I'm going to do this all with acrylics and see all the paint job. So if you guys don't have a colored photograph, definitely bring it up on your computer. But we're going to start to go ahead and paint our X. All right, got my browns. Like I said, I like to do a little bit of a dry brush on it. And you do that, it kind of highlights the highlight areas, but also you can, you can see there's still the black grains in there, which is nice. I think it's actually like a mocha color, but I'm going to go in and just do little highlights on it. Kind of break it up a little bit so it's not all the solid same color. Kind of just like get little bits of highlights in areas like so. Got a little of my highlights on there. And now I'm going to take a little bit of a black wash on my brush. I'm just going to highlight some of these cracks a little bit. Just freehand these a little bit. Just brush it in there. Okay. Now I have this all nice and dry. My next step is I'm going to paint the head. The reason I'm going to paint this head first because we can still be holding this a lot. So the last thing we're going to paint is the handle here. So because we're going to be holding it a lot here. So next step is the blade. So I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mask this off with a paper towel. Normally I use some saran wrap, but this paint's still fresh. And I discovered if you do that with the, the saran wrap plastic, it kind of pulls the paint off. So got a little my low resistant blue tape. Okay, so you see what I'm doing? I'm using this stuff, blue tape. This actually is uh, blue tape interior. Uh, Scott, sorry, Scott makes it. Scott blue interiors for house paint, you know, masking off walls. I like it because it's super low tack. So I went and cut the, uh, the template they needed. I'll gently lay on top of my, uh, my paint there. And a little extra tape here for the corners. And notice I'm not pressing very hard. I'm just gently lining this down because you don't want to press too hard because the paint is still relatively fresh. All right, there it is, all painted. Now the silver, this is, I like to use, this is the Krylon Shimmer Silver. It's the same thing I used on my Inquisitor helmet. I really like this color because it's bright because I know for a fact we're going to dirty it down. So I got my little black acrylic. I'm going to do a little thin black acrylic wash with uh, some burnt sienna, which is kind of adds to my rustic, kind of adds a little bit of a rust. So I kind of mix those two together. I mix my black and a little bit of burnt sienna. You know, wipe my brush. What I do is try to dry it out a little bit on my brush. And then thin out what I got on here. Then I get my paper towel. I kind of blot. Because if it's too much in some spots, I just want to hit it with a paper towel. But I want to kind of keep it pity looking because it's got the, uh, the cracks and crevices it's going to go into. That's it, looking good. I like that. Now that this is all dry, there's a little bit of rust, and I got my uh, burnt sienna paint, which is the great stuff for rust. I'm going to do a uh, really wet little batch of that on the brush, and I'm just going to stipple in the corners and the design. You can see, you can kind of see where the burnt sienna falls, like the rust. I'm going to do it here, back in here in the corners. We're going to mask the, the brown off so I don't paint it. This is, uh, gets this up at like UPS. This is the uh, wrapping paper for uh, shipping. What I do is I very gently, I'm going to wrap it around the, uh, the wood handle as my masking. Because right now, this tape's so raw, I don't want to put tape on it. I just want to do this plastic. And I'm just going to just gently, I'm not going to pull really tight on it. I'm just going to gently cover it with the plastic. Uh, I learned this trick when I was working at the uh, HPR, the shop. Uh, my friend Jason taught me this little trick. You just wrap things in pl sh plastic because most of the time when we're working on jobs, we have to mask and paint something all in the same day. So when you got a prop that's two or three different colors and you're painting things, you can't put tape on top of fresh paint because it'll pull it off. So we end up using the uh, plastic wrap as uh, masking. Okay, what I'm doing is uh, the brown and the wood and the brown on the uh, handle is almost the same in the original design, which I'm not that crazy about. But I'm going to go ahead and take the, uh, the brown acrylic. But what I did is help the brown acrylic stick really well. I went ahead and just dusted it with the, uh, of course, the uh, Rust-Oleum primer. Just dust it. So um, the reason I do that is because the acrylic paint will stick really well to that. 
and I'm going to go ahead and take a, a brush. And just paint this guy on here. All right, there it is. Got the brown on here. I did two coats with the acrylic. Did a primer base coat, brush it on there. Hit with the hair dryer, did a second coat. And now I got my airbrush. I'm going to go in, kind of where the divots are. Let's flip this guy around real quick, make it easier. And I'm just going to try to break it off just very lightly. I'm trying to make it look a little bit like a, a little, there we go. To kind of do some, some grooves and stuff on it. Because my philosophy is if it's leather, it's just got dirty from hands. I have my hairbrush. I'm going to go ahead and dark these cracks, like just underneath there a little bit. There you go. It looks nice. Like, like dirt and grimes got in there. So just going to very gently, just lightly, not too much. All right, as I said, <clears throat> now it's all done. I got the, uh, went in with the black to kind of dirty up the, uh, the, the tan leather. It's all done, and my next step is I'm going to put a little pledge flow wax on it. And I always like to seal it on there, and people always ask me, do I thin this down with anything before I airbrush it? No. Pledge flow wax is water thin. It goes through the airbrush. But I'm going to seal it up, and when it's done, it has a little bit of a sheen to it. And I don't want the leather and the wood be, to be so shiny. So once the floor wax is on there is dry, I like to go back again with a matte finish, Krylon's matte finish. And I don't go heavy, you just do a couple thin coats that takes the shine out. So that's what, but I still use the wax, um, I use the floor wax first. So let's go ahead and just put a real thin coat of the wax on top of this. Here it is, all coated with floor wax. I went in with the uh, Krylon uh, matte finish and sprayed the handle. And the thing is, it knocked it down a little bit. It's not as shiny as it was, but it's still kind of get a machine. If anybody out there has a trick on how to make this less shiny, I'm all for hearing it. So anyway, but that guys is pretty much it for our axe handle right now. Victory. Now I'm not the only one with an Iron War Axe from Skyrim. You guys, again, this video was sponsored by TNT Cosplay Foam. They're a great resource for L200 Foam. As a matter of fact, they have a great backstory. Go to their website and read their backstory. As a matter of fact, while you're there, buy foam because you won't be able to resist because they have great reasonable prices. Also, I want to thank everybody who's been shopping through Amazon. It's been great. The more you guys shop through Amazon, the more it helps me. Thank you so much. It doesn't have to be cosplay stuff. It could be anything from t-shirts to tennis shoes. Just you guys shopping through Amazon helps me so much. Now, guys, go to my website. Get on my mailing list, eviltedsmith.com. While you're there, go to my store where I have other patterns for sale. Check it out. Buy some stuff. Well, guys, this pretty much concludes on how to make an iron war axe from Skyrim. Catch you back next time right here on Evil Ted Channel. Come on.